Welcome to Photoshop Pro. We're going to bring some images into Photomatix right now and do some preliminary work in the Details Enhancer. Open the application and click Load Bracketed Photos. Browse and navigate to the folder where your photos are. And I'm going to go ahead and take these five images of a Chinese temple taken in Phuket in Thailand. These are all raw images, as you can see. I like working with raw images in Photomatix. You get a little bit more detail out of the dark areas. Click OK. You get this handy dandy little dialog box right here. These top two here, you definitely always want to have those clicked on, even if you shoot with a tripod. Align source images. Keep the top radio button clicked on if you have shot with a tripod. If you shot all your images handheld, and put that bottom one on. Reduce ghosting artifacts uh, with the semi-manual radio button clicked on. In a couple of seconds you're going to see why this is kind of important. But even though you do have a line source images, you may still actually see a little ghosting in your image. This gives you a little extra control over that. You'll see in a second. Reduce noise. I didn't really see any noise in these pictures. But if you do, click that on. How strongly do you want this denoised, and which images do you want to work on? Only the underexposed ones, the ones basically zero EVs to underexposed, or all of them. I'm going to leave that clicked off. I didn't see any chromatic aberrations. I'll leave that off. This part of the dialog box down here uh, becomes visible only if you're bringing in raw images. This was all shot in natural light, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it as shot. But if you shot under fluorescent light or tungsten or one of these other options, go ahead and play around with that. See what kind of effects you get. You might like it, you might not. Pre-process, done. Now we're going to go ahead and generate the HDR image itself and really get to work. And here's the value of clicking on the uh, reduced ghosting artifacts in the previous dialog box is that this window will now come up. This window is too large to fit into my recording area, so I'll just slip and slide the thing around. Uh, you can see that you could uh, zoom it up, up to 200%, increase the brightness if you want. The real value of this comes in right here. I see an area inspecting the image that still looks a little bit shaky, a little bit ghosty. So what you do now is simply do a left click and drag a selection around some area in your image that may still look a little bit ghosted. Once you've got it captured there, do a right click, mark selection as ghosted area, then come over to this part of the window and click preview de-ghosting. This usually does a darn good job, sometimes just outstanding, sometimes pretty good, and let's see how we do in reducing the ghosting of this specific area. Not bad, pretty good. Still looks a little shaky. I might want to do some post-processing work in Photoshop, but I'm reasonably happy with that. So now just simply click OK. And the HDR image will begin to be generated now. What comes up is a lot of stuff. First of all, the histogram, that's for information purposes only, it gives you an idea of the range, tonal range of your pixels throughout the red, uh, the blue, and the green channels. You can go ahead and X out of that. This one has got some built-in uh, presets. If you see some of these effects you might want to try, it'll instantaneously apply them if you want to click painterly or grunge or black and white or whatever. Uh, near the end of the tutorial, I'll show you how to save your settings. If you make some settings, you, you're sure you're going to want to apply the exact same thing to other images. You can save these presets, then the next time you'll see them in here and you can just click on them and you're rolling. Okay, here we go. Uh, tone mapping is what we're working on and the method is going to be the details enhancer. And there are a set of sliders to work on here. Uh, not only these main five, but you get more sliders in tone settings, color settings, and miscellaneous settings. We'll go through these last three here in another tutorial. This tutorial we're just going to work on these five. Very first thing you want to do is, I can see from these numbers that uh, they're not of the default values. I've worked at an image already. Photomatix has saved those settings and has automatically applied them now to this new image, which I don't really want. 
click on default. Get into the habit of always clicking default when you start a new image. Get back to a good starting point. Okay, now let's look at two of these sliders together, a pair of them, the strength slider and the smoothing slider. These two really work together. They both work on contrast. If you bring up the strength, what's going to happen is you're going to increase the contrast of your image. And it's also going to make it a little bit darker. If you drag the strength all the way down, you're going to be killing the contrast in your image, kind of, and it's going to make it lighter. With the smoothing, this smooths out contrast. So if you bring your smoothing slider all the way up, you're going to smooth out any areas of contrast, and it's going to make your image lighter. If you slide it all the way to the left, it's going to remove the smoothing of that contrast and make your image consequently darker. So you can see why these two need to be worked on together. If you're dragging up your strength indicator um, to increase contrast, well you don't want to drag this up also because that kind of smooths out contrast. So work these two, the strength and the smoothing, kind of like a seesaw. If you're going to, if you're going to bring your strength up a little bit, then don't drag up the smoothing. Either leave it where it is or pull it down a little bit. Uh, maybe in the, in these areas of contrast, it got a little bit too much for you. You want to smooth them out a little bit. Do that here. If you want a more realistic looking image, drag your strength a little bit down to the left and likewise drag your smoothing a little bit up to the right. That's going to create a more realistic looking image. Now you do get another option on the smoothing slider. As you can see below, you've got a little checkbox for something called light mode. And now if you click on that box, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to lighten up your shadows a little bit better, but you need to be real careful with this one. Um, let's bring in our options there. You've got five options, minimum, low, uh, mid, high, and uh, max. I almost never stray away from either mid or high. What happens when you click minimum smoothing in light mode? It just is unusable, an unusable image. Or, or possibly something you want to generate for the internet as an example of what never to do. If you click on max, you can see what's going to happen there. And another effect I'm not sure I like. I think I want to just leave this at mid. Uh, again, uh, when light mode works on the shadow areas a little bit more. Okay, let's get back to the regular old slider and smoothing. So there it is, strength and smoothing, work them together, kind of like a seesaw. Next two sliders I'm going to talk about are luminosity and micro contrast. You should work on these together also, work them as a pair. Uh, if you pull up luminosity, it's going to globally make your image brighter. And if you pull it all the way down to the left, globally going to make your image darker. You pull it down to the left, you're going to start losing details in your shadows. Pull it up to the right, you're going to start gaining details in your shadows, but it's also making your entire image brighter. Micro contrast, conversely, you, know, you drag your micro contrast all the way up. What it's going to do is, in local details area, it's going to be making the image sharper. But you see it also makes the image darker as it makes it sharper. Likewise, if you kill the micro contrast, you're going to be killing the sharpening a little bit and you're also going to make the image lighter. So you see how these two should work together. Only these two, you're not going to work them like a seesaw, you're going to work them pretty much in conjunction. My first recommendation is take micro contrast, uh, take a look at the sharpening in your image, uh, as you drag this up, see if you like the way it's sharpening up a little bit. And if the image is getting a little bit too dark, and, but you're happy with the sharpening, then simply balance it out by dragging up the luminosity. So work with the micro contrast first, and then do your balancing with the luminosity. Color saturation is pretty straightforward. You just simply drag this all the way to the right to make your colors incredibly radioactive. And another good example of what not to do with HDR images, if you drag it all the way to the left, 
you create a grayscale image. I'm going to leave that on about 50. You've got to be real careful with the saturation. It's real easy to go overboard with this. So that's about it on this tutorial. Work the strength and the smoothing together like a seesaw. Work luminosity and micro contrast together in conjunction, up a little bit together or down a little bit together. Color saturation, pretty straightforward. If you like the effect you've got, well, go ahead and, and click process to create the image. Um, if you think you're going to apply these settings to another image, uh, get on presets and save your settings. Give it whatever name you want, and then you, it will apply in the little thumbnail thing I showed you before, and you can apply it to other images. And there we have it. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.